the house is full of antiques, including me. <laughs> so what else do you have here? This is a Japanese copy of the samurai sword that they decapitate you with. Louis Zamperini's home is too small to hold memories of a life so large. There are the trophies honoring his athletic accomplishments. Well, these are the five torches that I carried. So you, these five torches you carried in five different Olympic ceremonies. Right. And then there are the souvenirs from the prison camps where he spent two years of his life. This is the, the fork I used, it's a bamboo fork. An old belt buckle. I'm surprised the Japanese didn't take it away from me because they were short of brass. But Louis Zamperini's story was pretty much ancient history. An elderly man waving in a parade. Until a best-selling book reminded the world of his harrowing tale. His first fame came when he was just a teenager. In 1936, he made the U.S. Olympic team. At 19, he was the youngest qualifier in the 5,000 meters. He didn't win, but Louis Zamperini became a household name, a sports hero. A few years later, the nation was at war. Zamperini was a bombardier in the Army Air Corps. In May 1943, his B-24 crashed into the Pacific. Our number one engine, the RPMs dropped. This plane was barely flying with four motors, and with two gone, it just dropped like a rock. And so we hit the uh, water nose down. I felt like someone hit me in the forehead with a sledgehammer. The plane was completely blown apart. What happened next and, uh, was documented in this 1998 story and, uh, from correspondent Bob Simon. Zamperini spotted a life raft floating rapidly away from the burning waters. He swam to it. 47 days in an inflatable raft. We never prayed before, but on a raft you pray like a foxhole. <laughs> he fought off sharks and battled the sea. Things went from bad to worse. Zamperini was near death when he was captured by the Japanese and taken to a place known as Execution Island, where every known prisoner had been put to death. They took great joy in telling us we were going to be executed, you know, and they'd always go through the motion. It got even worse. His fame back home led to hours of torture and beatings at the hands of a sadistic guard nicknamed the Bird. I couldn't bear to look in his eyes. I just couldn't do it. They were, to me, they were that sadistic. When he wasn't being beaten, he was starved like most of the Americans held by the Japanese, but somehow he survived. Louis Zamperini returned home a hero. This is your life. There were TV appearances. His life appeared to return to normal, but the war years, while gone, were anything but forgotten. Haunted by nightmares, he turned to alcohol. Then, in a last-ditch effort to save his marriage and perhaps his life, Zamperini joined his wife Cynthia at a prayer service led by a young Billy Graham. Graham's sermon touched on the power of forgiveness. It was the first night in two years and a half that I didn't have a nightmare and I haven't had one since. So it, uh, the forgiveness it was the complete healing factor in my life which is why Zamperini decided to commit himself to a lifetime of forgiveness. And that meant he had to go back to Japan to see the prison guards who'd tried so hard to destroy him. The most important thing in my Christian life was to know that I not only forgave him verbally, but to see him face to face and tell him that I forgave him. That was more than 60 years ago, and our story would end there, were it not for the book, Unbroken. This is the English version. Here's Louis. He became a celebrity all over again. Readers clamored to see him. And I said, no way. To hear him, to applaud his life. When you finished reading that book, 
What did you think? It put me back in prison. And I had to stop and look out the window to be sure I wasn't back in prison. Did you ever imagine it would be a bestseller? Well, her, uh, she's a great writer. She is author Laura Hillenbrand. Her last book was the bestseller Sea Biscuit. Unbroken took her seven years to research and write. But in all that time, you may be surprised to learn that the author and the subject of her story never met, not even once. Helen Brand never met Zamperini because at the time she was suffering from a chronic illness that made it difficult for her to leave her home here in this neighborhood of Washington, D.C. So we spoke with her the same way Zamperini did, on the phone. Patients often go into times where they are literally unable to get out of bed for weeks or months or years. And it was something that helped me identify with Louis because he... His story is largely about suffering. Hillenbrand says she thinks not meeting Zamperini actually made her book better. Because when he was telling me his stories, I wasn't looking at a 90-year-old man. I was thinking about a 17-year-old runner or a 26-year-old guy out on a life raft. And I was able to visualize it. But while Hillenbrand came to know nearly everything about Zamperini, he knew almost nothing about her. When the papers printed her story, I couldn't believe it. The, the, the only thing I could do, and I felt was proper, I sent her one of my Purple Hearts, and I said, you deserve this more than I do. Why did you feel she deserved it more than... Well, she's been suffering for 30 years. I suffered for a couple of years. Turns out the 47-year-old author and the aging veteran shared much more than the past. Laura has said that when times get really tough for her, she calls you. We talk to each other on the phone. I mean, okay, so people say, oh yeah, Louie's my inspiration. Well, I might say that she's my inspiration. When we that, talked, uh, Zamperini said he hoped one friend. day to meet Helen Brand, that he had a message. Well, I don't think we'll tell each other very much except I love you. Not long after, that hope became a reality. While in Washington in 2012, he paid a visit to her home. He told me as uh, we were hugging each other and saying goodbye, uh, he said that the book was the crescendo of his life, and he believes he's lived this long so he could see it written and read. And that was the loveliest thing he's ever said to me. As for Louis Zamperini, he had something to share with all his newfound admirers. You forgave your Japanese enemies. Do you think Americans forgive enough? No, I think that's the hardest thing in life, I think, is forgive. Hate is self-destructive. If you hate somebody, you're not hurting the person you hate, you're hurting yourself. And, uh, that's a healing. Actually, it's a real healing, forgiveness.